<laughs> All right, let's just go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online live streaming worship service, August 30th, end of the month. Wow. Sorry we didn't have any prelude music. We, we had, some, we had a, a technical difficulty back there. Somehow we got signed out and we had to go through that. So we will play the postlude prelude video in full at the end so you can hear and see Sharon play her beautiful music. So you're not going to miss it. Stick around and watch that. All right, <clears throat> just a few announcements before we get to our gathering words. A couple things I want to remind you of. We're going to put these up on the screen here. Um, a couple of things. First of all, Zoom call prayer meetings this week. Those are going to be up there on the screen for you. Monday, 8 a.m., Wednesday, 12 noon, and Friday 
at 7.30 p.m. And if you want, those are all Pacific times, by the way. If you want information on those calls and how to get into them, let me know. You can message me, text, whatever. Also, we want to make sure the Lewiston First Care team uh, could use some stamps and some cards and things like that. And, uh, and uh, so we actually have information. Uh, you want to make your, send your contribution to Liz Chavez at 1521 15th Avenue in Lewiston. And be aware, we sent emails out and warned everyone about this already, but in, if you're watching too and maybe you've gotten some of these, there are a lot of pastors have been hit with some email scams, not necessarily the pastor, but people in the church of those pastors. And you will, it'll look like emails from the pastor. It might even say, like, Pastor Cody is sending you this message, and my, the email address might be very similar to mine, and it's asking for gift cards to help out people in need. That's not me. Oh, no, it's okay. Well, maybe, not, maybe another time. Maybe next week. But, uh, yeah, so be aware of that, that that's happening, and it's not me. There are a couple ways you can uh, double-check in any email. If it sounds fishy and it looks like it's from me, double-check the email address. My email address is pastorcwstoffer at gmail.com. Pastorcwstoffer at gmail.com. <coughs> that's one way. If it doesn't match, it's not me. Two, and this is, I should have said this as number one, I will never ask you for a gift card in the email, okay? I'm not saying I won't ever ask you to maybe help out another member or somebody in need. I mean, that, that could happen, but I'm definitely never going to ask for gift cards in uh, an email, okay? It'll probably be like a phone call or face-to-face -face if we can ever get there, <laughs> all right? So just be aware of that email scam. Okay, also, coming up in October, we're going to begin our next book study in our anti-racism series, okay? And this book is called I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Ch Channing Brown. And I'm letting you know uh, we're not doing a study during the month of September, let you take a little break and give you time to purchase a copy or get a hold of a digital copy of this book. So starting in October, and as we get closer, we'll lock down and give you the exact details on um, when the Zoom meeting calls will be, okay? And then also today, we have a guest preacher filling in by a video. Now, we didn't have Sunday Schooled this week or last week, but if you remember way back when, at the very beginning, our very first Sunday Schooled guest teacher was Dr. Thomas J. Ord. Well, he is our guest preacher today. <coughs> uh, in our continuing series on learning to love our enemies. And I couldn't think of a better person for the topic today. And so he, here's the deal. He's written most recently a book called God Can't and a follow-up called God Can't Q&A. And both of those books are fantastic. I want to give somebody a copy of each of those books. All right? So here's Here's how we're going to do this. Rather than answer a trivia question, I want you, I, I really like uh, folk music, okay? So I want you to, uh, like I love Woody Guthrie, Arlo Guthrie, uh, lots of the Pete Seeger, and more modern as well, folk music, uh, Avert Brothers and Mumford and Sons and so, so forth. So I want to hear your favorite either folk artist or folk uh, song, okay? Uh, could be This Land is Your Land, you know, it could be something like that. So in the comments, go ahead and share your favorite folk artist or song, and then use hashtag so that I know what to, to, that I can find it. Use a little hashtag folk music, all right? So that's how we're going to do that. So everybody who answers with their favorite artist or song will get entered into a drawing for a copy of each of these books, God Can't and the follow-up God Can't Q&A, all right? Awesome, appreciate it. Now, today, for Children's Moment, go ahead, uh, Adele, bring me, up your, bring me up your bag over here. So what we like to do at the Clarkston United Methodist, come on over here. This is Adele, Adele's in school now, third grade, 
And what we like to do at the United, in a lot of United Methodist churches is we like to hold at the beginning of the school year a blessing of the backpacks. Usually we do a, um, a supply drive or something like that. And um, are we still? Okay. We like to u- use a, uh, do a supply drive to help kids with some backpacks and materials. And then we do a blessing of that stuff before we send it out. Well, we haven't been able to do that. So today for Children's Moment, Kayless is going to do a blessing of the backpack. So if you in your household have some backpacks or school supplies or just your kids, bring them for Children's Moment. We're giving you a heads up. Make sure you grab them, have them handy and ready for Kayless's blessing of the backpacks. All right, so like this one we got here, we're going to have it here for when Kayless does her blessing of the backpacks. All right, thank you so much. All right, thanks, son. (laughs) <laughs> okay, with that said now, please join me in the gathering words. should be on the screen or you can download a bulletin. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, Holy, holy. All right, please join us for our opening song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. This time we are going to uh, share some joys and concerns and offer up some prayer. I want to encourage you to, uh, throughout the week, just as anything comes up, go ahead and send those in to either either of the offices, church offices, or to myself, any prayer concerns or praise. That way we, can, uh, we have teams in both churches who are all about uh, praying for people. And so if they get that information, uh, we can be praying for it immediately and uh, continuously. So encourage you uh, to reach out to us with your praise and prayer concerns. You can message them directly to me, call me, email me, text me, or to either of the church offices as well. And then in each, uh, at the Clarkson Church, uh, Darlene Larson also is a great contact for that. And um, I believe in the Lewiston Church, uh, there's a couple of different people, but we'll get an exact contact person for that too. So a few things we want to make sure to mention today uh, in, 
in the concerns, we have uh, Judy Jacoby's niece. Her name is Christine Beatty, and she is asking for some prayer as she's in a stage of uh, uh, cancer, and it's um, they're in a they're needing to get some more testing done this week to figure out what exactly they're going to do. So b- please bring in prayer for Christine ba- Beatty. Beatty. And then I I noticed here that Bonnie mentions in the comments that her son Pete, uh, he did have recently surgery to have a titanium disc put into his neck there. And so she's asking for prayers that the bones will grow uh, into the new titanium disc. Uh, That way he can go back to work. He has an appointment to see the doctor pretty soon here. So we hope to see some good progress there. And then, of course, on our joys Today, two big anniversaries today. Patricia and Larry Butts are celebrating their 62nd year of marriage, so congratulations to them, and I hope they have a good time celebrating. And also today, uh, Peggy and Jim Payne are celebrating 40 years of marriage today, so congratulations to them. And then later on this week, Linda and Daley Clinton are celebrating 53 years, so congrats to you all. If you want some anniversaries or birthdays mentioned, please, just like you're sending in prayers and, and other concerns, uh, send those in as well. We'll make sure we get those on. We have a list of both churches, but being reminded helps a ton. All right. Now, uh, if you want to continue to list your prayer requests or concerns in the comments, we'll make sure to get those and write those down and send those to our prayer teams. But please join me now for a moment of prayer, and then we'll all come together for the Lord's Prayer. God, we humbly come before you now. We lift up our joys and our concerns to you. First of all, God, we are so thankful for the wonders of uh, happy uh, relationships as such as being celebrated today and this week, uh, long-term marriages. We're so thankful to see those. They provide us with hope and uh, a little bit of joy during this time to see good people uh, celebrate in this way. And we're thankful for that. Lord, we do lift up to you, Christine Beatty, to you, and we pray for the testing that will happen this week, that a clear picture of what exactly needs to be done will be presented. And I pray for her well-being during this time, her mental stability uh, as she's uh, stressed and anxious about this. And we pray for her family as well. Lord, we continue to pray for Pete and uh, thankful for the uh, good surgery and prayers for his continued recovery and that his neck bones will grow in such a way that it, he can uh, go back to work uh, soon and that it is all going well there in his neck. And God, we uh, especially now pray, we lift up to you all of this turmoil that's going on with the loss of life here recently in a couple of different places and we just pray God for we pray for peace Lord we also pray uh, we don't just pray for peace God we pray that you'd also give us the wisdom and the courage to do what we need to do to help peace become a reality Uh, that we would be peacemakers God as you uh, have called many of us to be and so Lord I just pray that you'd give us a wisdom a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of boldness and courage uh, and discernment to know what to say, when to say it, when not to say it, and what not to say, and what to do and what not to do during this time. But above all, to work for peace and for wholeness in our country and beyond. Lord, we lift up all those who are Uh, right now afraid and frightened and anxious about everything that's going on with the pandemic and violence in the streets and all sorts of stuff going on God we just pray for we just pray for everybody who's right there in the middle of it we pray that uh, hearts would be open to the possibility of uh, a peaceful way forward we pray for righteousness and justice and peace in mercy and grace. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. And we pray together as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, uh, we, Matthew will be reading our scripture for today. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Hello, and welcome to Online Children's Moment. So this time of year, we usually have a blessing of the backpacks everyone brings forward their backpack who will be going to school and their supplies and the students are blessed. It's going to look a little different this year, but we're going to do that again. And I feel like maybe this is even more needed now than in previous years. So hopefully you've had time to grab some supplies. Uh, if not, that's fine. We'll still be saying a blessing over you for as we, you move forward in your school year. I'll show you a couple of my supplies. I have mask, a few books here and there, just a few, it's fine, um, notebook, and of course a planner, highly recommend planners. Um, so those are some of my supplies that I have here to say a prayer over. Uh, don't know what your supplies look like this year. It might be different. It might be a computer. It might be a backpack still. It depends on where you're going to school and how you're going to school. But either way, we're going to go ahead and say a prayer over you and over the supplies that will be helping you through this year and also over the people who will be helping you through this year. All right, so let's take an attitude of prayer, whatever that looks like for you. And those of you who are not students, I would just ask you to join in and keep in mind those you know who are going to be at school, either as a student, a teacher, and any sort of support role. All right, so take an attitude of prayer, whatever that looks like for you. Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have to learn. Please watch over us as we move into this new time and this new school year. Please help these supplies and these people as they move forward to help us learn about your world and your love in the world. Please be with the students and the teachers wherever they're at in this time. Keep them safe and healthy. As we move forward, let us remember you and your assurances. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, I hope you all have a really wonderful year. Um, I'd love to hear how it goes. Just, you know, send me an email if you'd like. Uh, love to see any first day of school pictures. I've already seen a couple of yours um, online. So I hope you have a great year. See you later. So just in case people didn't catch on the comments, uh, especially folks from Lewiston First United Methodist Church, Gayla Ballantyne apparently is in the hospital. She's broke some bones in her leg, so be in prayer, please, for Gayla Ballantyne. And we'll uh, 
we'll let you know if we get any updates on that. So I wanted to make sure you saw that and knew about that, and we're praying for that. And now, uh, without any further ado, our guest preacher, Dr. Thomas J. Ord, will be presenting the sermon today. And thanks to Tom. Welcome. I am uh, honored to be speaking with you this morning or this afternoon, whenever you're viewing this particular uh, sermon. I'm privileged to be asked by uh, Pastor Cody to talk a little bit about uh, the themes that you've been working through lately in terms of loving your enemies. And the uh, text or the story that I want to talk with you about is there on the screen. Well, I should say the highlight, the important uh, uh, um, key point in the story is there on the screen. It's the conclusion of a story that some of you may be familiar with, the story of a person named Joseph. Joseph, uh, the Joseph story has more than 12 chapters, I think, in the Bible, so there's no way I want to e read through it all or even try to summarize uh, everything, but just a few key points. Joseph is a, the, one of the youngest of 12 sons who has a dream. He tells his older brothers this dream. The dream involves him having all kinds of power. The brothers are so angry with him that they want to kill him, but they decide instead to sell him into slavery. He goes into slavery, ends up moving up in the slavery system, but is accused of uh, sexual infidelity, uh, rape perhaps, and uh, then is sent to prison. He's in prison for a long time and eventually ends up being given the, uh, the charge of guiding the whole nation to um, overcome a uh, famine. And his brothers who have sent him to this uh, difficult situation into slavery, uh, which led him to prison, but then eventually to a point of uh, leadership, his brothers come to him and need food because uh, the famine has hit their land. Joseph has the opportunity then to give them food, and he ends up revealing who he is and forgiving them what they've done to him. This one particular passage, though, that's on your screen, I want to highlight. Uh, these are supposedly the words of Joseph talking to his brothers. You planned something bad for me, but God produced something good. About 35 years ago, man, maybe not quite that long, but quite a few years ago, I was sitting in a library in Nampa, Idaho, working on a term page or paper project. And a thought ran through my brain that changed the way I think about God and reality. This thought is not one that most people have spent much time with. And I suspect when I tell it to you, it will seem somewhat theoretical, somewhat abstract. And you might wonder what it has to do with this story or even life in general. Here is the thought that ran through my brain and that has since transformed the way I think about God the reality in my life. Perhaps God experiences time moment by moment. That was the thought. Perhaps God experiences time like we do moment by moment. Now, I had been taught in Sunday school, I'm not sure explicitly or just indirectly, but I had been taught that God sits outside of history, stands outside of time, and from this perspective can see everything beginning and end all at once. God was not experiencing time such that the past was really past for God and the future was really the future for God, but God saw all of time all at once. Philosophers and theologians like me would call this God as non-temporal, not timeful at all. But I was beginning to wonder if it made more sense to think that God 
experiences time like we do. Now, why does this matter at all? Well, let me go to the next screen to talk a little bit about it. The idea of God is in time rather than outside of it. One of the things this implies is that the future is open. It hasn't been decided. It's not determined. The future has still to be, not only for us, but also for God. Even God faces an open future. And that has interesting implications. And let me talk briefly about three of them. First of all, this means that when we pray, things haven't already been decided. You see, if God stands outside of time and somehow God knows the past, present, and future simultaneously, and if God can't make an error, in other words, his knowledge can never be false, that makes it the case that the future is somehow already decided and settled. But if the future is already decided and settled, it makes very little sense to actually pray and ask God to do something that God wouldn't have already decided and predetermined that God would do. In other words, petitionary prayer makes a lot more sense if God experiences time moment by moment like we do, and therefore can actually respond to our prayers and do something new in the future that is totally open. Second idea I have up here. This also affects what we think about God's knowledge. You see, I've been always taught that God knows everything that's going to happen in the future as if it's already settled and done. But I saw the real conflict in this idea with the notion that you and I, or most of us have, that we are somehow genuinely free. Because freedom implies the idea of choosing amongst options in every moment, as if those options or possibilities are genuine, that the future could be one or the other, or one among many, depending on the choices we make. And we are not entirely determined by the past as we make these these choices. This idea that we have some degree of freedom, I don't think it's unlimited freedom, but some degree of freedom moment by moment is at the heart of the Methodist Wesleyan tradition. But if God knows with absolute certainty everything that's going to happen in the future, that suggests that the future must already be settled, fixed, complete. Otherwise, God might make a mistake about what that is. But if that future is settled and complete, how are we truly free to choose amongst options? So, thinking that God was in time helped me with that conceptual problem. And the third one, and the one that I want to focus on in relation to the Joseph story, has to do with suffering. You see, if God is outside of time, it makes a lot of sense to think that Everything is part of God's predetermined or at least foreknown plan. And therefore, all the rotten things that we have to go through in life, all the rotten things we witness in others, all the genuine evils, unnecessary suffering, the pointless pains of reality are somehow, in some mysterious way, a part of God's plan, God's blueprint. And that doesn't make it, at least me, it doesn't make me think God is a particularly loving God for putting this kind of plan in place. Let me illustrate this by a story of a a true story of a woman who was a real rock star when I was a kid. Uh, Her name is Johnny Erickson Tata. She was with her family in the Chesapeake Bay when she was about 16 years old jumped out of their boat and hit her head on something just below the surface of the water, and she was paralyzed from the neck down. She responded to this personal tragedy by beginning to write books, beginning to speak. She recorded albums. Uh, she started a group for or a, um, association for people with disabilities. 
she became a very wonderful person. In other words, she had virtues and characteristics that uh, I think we all would like to have in our own lives. 50 years after that accident, and then a lifetime of giving in beautiful ways, she wrote a blog essay to talk about her life. I want to read a bit of what she read in this blog essay. This came out a few years ago. She says this, Often when I share my testimony, I, let's move my face over lip, I reflect on how off track I had become in my Christian life before my diving accident. You know, I said recently, I was involved in some pretty immoral stuff when I was on my feet. Even though I was a Christian, I was sinning big time, heading down a wrong path. Deep in my heart, I know that if my accident hadn't happened, I would have completely ignored my convictions in college. She goes on, Someone who is listening to me asked, Johnny, are you saying that God was punishing you with a broken neck? It was a good question. My mind went to Hebrews 12, 6. The Lord disciplines everyone he accepts as a son. Oh, the Lord disciplines those he loves, I'm sorry, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And I had to look that person straight in the eye and say, yes, I believe God was punishing me for doing wrong. I don't think God is like that. But it makes sense for Johnny, who thinks that God is outside of time and that all of history is a blueprint, a plan that God has predestined. She believes in predestination predestined and foreknown from all eternity, it makes sense for her to look at some horrible thing that happened to her and then all the good that came from it and say, God was punishing me by breaking my neck and then see all the good things that came from it. My view is very different because I think God doesn't stand outside of time, but experiences time with us moment by moment. I don't think evil of any kind is part of some divine predetermined plan. I don't think God causes the evil in the world. I don't even think God allows it as if God could have stopped it. I don't think God is in the business of causing or allowing pointless pain, genuine evil, or unnecessary suffering. Instead, because I think God experiences time moment by moment, I think God has plans, but they're flexible in response to what we and others do in creation. God's plan is always that we love and that we live a good life and that creation be redeemed. But how that is affected is changes moment by moment as we engage in this free and loving relationship with God and others. That means that when bad things happen, It's not that God caused them or even allowed them. But, as my last point puts it here, I think God works with creation to try to squeeze some good out of the bad God didn't want in the first place. So in the case of Johnny Erickson, I don't think God wanted Johnny to to be paralyzed from the neck down. But... God worked with Johnny, and Johnny had to respond to bring something good out of the bad God didn't want in the first place. And that is the theme that helps me to understand the Joseph story. It helps me to understand this particular verse, which says, you planned something bad for me, that's Joseph talking to his brothers, but God produced something good. To use my language, God squeezed something good from the bad that was done to Joseph by his brothers, by others in his life, being in prison, etc. Of course, Joseph had to cooperate with God. It's not like God uh, is in total control of things, orchestrating and manipulating things. No, God is working with us and others in creation to try to redeem to try to squeeze something good 
from the bad God didn't want in the first place. That's my message of hope for you today. It hinges on a weird kind of abstract theoretical idea that God experiences time like we do. But I think the effect, the result, the consequences of thinking that God experiences time can help us make sense of biblical stories like Joseph's, stories we hear like those from Johnny Erickson Tata, and the kind of lives that you and I live day to day. We don't have to think that the bad stuff that happens in our lives is somehow caused or allowed by God because there's this predetermined blueprint, this plan set for all eternity. Rather, we can believe God suffers with us in the midst of our suffering and works to heal to whatever extent possible and works to bring something good out of the bad God didn't want in the first place. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Thomas Ord, for that fantastic presentation. And I will be putting the uh, names in a drawing. I'm pulling out a name to win two books, The God Can't and God Can't Q&A. Uh, so thanks again, Tom, for that. Now, ways you can give while we're apart. Let's head into our offering time here. Uh, this is probably, you've got this memorized, but just in case, here we go. You can mail in your checks. And uh, those are the addresses there. Clark's Demand Lewiston. And of course, you can find them on our websites and other directory places. So that is one good option. Another way, you could drop them off at the office. Make sure somebody's in the office. Go ahead and call ahead first. Or you could do our online giving. Both websites have online giving. For the Clarkson page, it's that green button up there at the top. Click, and it will ask you a couple things, but it's pretty easy to do. For the Lewiston, <coughs> for the Lewiston Church, uh, also up at the top, in the Contact Us section, you drop down the menu, and then there's a Donate button. You just click that, and it takes you somewhere you can give. If you don't want to do online, there is mobile, and this is a nice way because uh, you know, everybody has their phone with them usually at any time. And so if you just think about it, oh, shoot, I haven't given my offering yet this month. Well, boop, you pull it out no matter where you are and you can do it. So for Clarkston, you want to get the Hively app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. 
and then search for Clarkston UMC and give that way. The app for Lewiston First is called Give Plus Mobile App. You can search for that where you get your apps and then look for Lewiston First UMC and give that way. All right, those are the ways. Very easy, very simple to do. And in about, let's see, it's not, it might be October. I'm thinking it's October. We're actually going to do a stewardship series. You know that in the fall we like to do a kind of a, a series on stewardship. So that will be next month. And we're going to be talking about uh, giving and the motivation behind giving and what we do with our offerings here as a church, the different things that we participate in. So um, there's a good chance there. If you haven't practiced regular giving, uh, October is a good month to kind of put that into motion, and you can use one of these tools that we have to, to do it. Okay? So let's pray for our offering this week, and then we'll have our closing song in benediction. God, we thank you so much for uh, the uh, faithful givers here in these two congregations who've uh, sustained us during this time when we've been apart for so long, uh, not able to meet in person. But God, uh, just been overwhelmed with people's generosity and grace during this time. So Lord, today we pray for your blessing on this offering that we might use it to help others connect with God in a new and meaningful way. And, uh, Lord, that we might help uh, others in need. We love you, Lord God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Before I go to closing song, I do want to remind you, uh, we will have an after-worship Zoom call. The link is in the description there. I'll put a link in the comments as well and on my personal Facebook page, but just give me a few minutes after the benediction uh, to get set up, and then we'll do that, okay? Um, but just want to remind you of that. So if you have any questions, if you want to talk about anything in particular, or just see a few faces you haven't seen for a while, that Zoom call afterward is a great place to do it. All right, so let's uh, join in on our closing song, and I believe it is, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Please join. Join me in a benediction. Let me send you off with a, a little blessing. Uh, it's on the screen there for you to follow along. God sends us to serve. God sends us to love. God sends us to bless the world. May you be a blessing to the world. Peace be with you.